Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a kind of video you probably haven't seen on this channel for quite a while and it's going to be a who to sign guide for Atalanta. Now Atalanta are subject to my most recent video where I did a top 5 teams to rebuild before the end of FIFA 21. So this is going to be focused on FIFA 21, getting you immersed into your save and giving you some suggestions for rebuilding your team. The first thing you'll notice about Atalanta, if we can put the team ratings on the screen right now, is that they have no fullbacks in their squad. This limits you to playing a very specific style of football. With no wingers as well, you're pretty much forced to play three at the back with three good centre backs, which they do have, and you're forced to play up front a striker with two attacking midfielders next to him. If you're going for a full rebuild, then do keep this in mind because you will have to sign a first choice and a backup in every position if you want to be successful over the course of an entire season. So if you do want to go back to a 4-2-3-1 like they used to play, then feel free to sign two left backs, two right backs, two wingers in both sides, and that's really going to be your entire budget gone on those eight players. If you do keep the same kind of formation that they currently use, you can use your budget to strengthen places where they are weak. For example, their central midfield is fairly average for the league, attacking midfield isn't great either, and goalkeeper is in dire need of an upgrade. But anyway, as always in one of these videos, let's get started starting at the front of the pitch. Now, I've put Ilicic as a striker because I don't use a centre forward on my little chart, so we're going to include him with all the strikers. This is by far the best area of the pitch for players. You've got Muriel, you've got Zapata and you've got Ilicic who are all very good players. The biggest issue is the age of these players though. Ilicic is 32, Zapata and Muriel are both 29 and then the next best striker who's fairly young is Sam Lammers who's a 23 year old who's got potential to be pretty good but he's not there yet. So you might need an interim striker who's around 25, 26 years old in the mid to high 70s so you can have some cover for when one of these retires. I'll make sure to suggest a player in this bracket at the end of the video so make sure you stick around. The default formation includes having Ilicic playing on the right wing which is possible. He has actually got pretty good stats for this other than pace. He can score some absolute bangers from outside the box which most other players in your team would not be able to do. Zapata's got the strength, Muriel's got the pace, so having these as a front three is very effective. Further back in left and right midfield, you'll probably have Robin Goosens playing as left back or left wing back or left midfield depending on how you line up with your three at the back. And on the right midfield, you'll have Hans Hatterboer who's got similar stats, very strong, pretty quick, good at defending and good at getting forward. So if you do decide to keep the three at the back, these two are going to be crucial for you, covering for you in both attack and in defence. The left midfielder area could use another option. On right midfielder, you've got Yakim Mahler, who's been really good at the Euros and still has quite a lot of potential, very fast too, so you'll have an option to replace Hataboa if you don't like him or if he gets injured. On the left, you don't really have the same option. The best left midfielder is Matteo Rigueri, who's a 65 overall 18 year old. So again, this is a position where I will suggest a player for you to sign. There's lots of different options in the middle of midfield. You've got Martin Darun at defensive midfielder, Malinowski at cam, you've got Ramo Freuler at centre mid, Miranchuk at cam, Pasalic at centre mid and Pessina at centre attacking midfielder and then further down Kovalenko at attacking midfielder. So you have plenty of options to play the more offensive midfielder role. You've got a couple of options for the defensive midfielder role and I don't think it really matters who you play here. They've all got similar stats, they're all pretty quick, they're all pretty strong and quite a lot of them are Ukrainian. So maybe that's an area you could send your youth scouts out to if you are playing as Atalanta. Surprisingly, we're down to only two more positions to look at already because there's so few positions that you can look at in a 3-5-2. So moving back to centre-back and you do have an option that won't be there on FIFA 22. So that's going to be Christian Romero who's now gone to Tottenham Hotspur. So you've also got Berat Jimsti, who's a pretty decent centre-back, although he doesn't have a lot of potential to grow. You've got Romero, as I've previously mentioned. Rafael Toloi is a bit old and a bit slow on FIFA, unfortunately. And you've got Jose Luis Palomino, who again is getting on quite a bit. If you are determined to keep playing three at the back, I would recommend you do look at signing some centre-backs. And that's where we're going to be heading now, because the goalkeeping situation is actually pretty good. It might not look great on this chart, but that's just because they have low-rated Boris Radunovic bringing down the averages. Your actual goalkeeper's got quite a lot of potential. Pierre Luigi Gollini has 86 potential, which is the most in the entire team. So make sure you keep using him and you could have someone who's on a Donnarumma level after probably two or three seasons. 
So let's head over to the transfer window and see what we can find. So to cover that first position that I mentioned, the left midfielder or left wing back, depending on which version of the 3-5-2 you play, I've got four options for you to consider. The first one is Rico Henry. Now he can play left back or left wing back, and he's got a lot of pace, 92 acceleration, 91 sprint speed, really good agility and balance as well. In real life, he plays for recently promoted Premier League team Brentford, but on FIFA, he's still in the championship, so I think it'd be fairly realistic for you to go out and get him. He used to play for Exeter, he was very good in the lower leagues of England, so I highly recommend and see if he can make the step up to European football. Next up we have slightly older and slightly slower Adam Messina who's a 6 foot 3 option from Watford. Now he's a bit better at running up and down the pitch and he's definitely more of a physical presence. So if you do think you're lacking some sort of strength in midfield, have a look at Adam Messina from Watford. Miguel Trauco is kind of a combination of the two. He's got a bit more height, he's 5 foot 9, he's got more pace than Messina but he's not quite as strong. What he does make up for is more stamina than either, which is going to be useful for getting up and down the pitch. He's also the only one of these three players who can actually play as left midfield naturally, so he won't need to be trained. The final option is absolutely a combination of all three of these players. Six foot tall Diego Rico can also play at centre back, left back or left wing back. He's got around 75 pace, which is decent, 75 strength, 75 stamina. He can cross a ball the best out of anyone here. So I do recommend Diego Rico if you want cover at left back, left centre back and left wing back. It wouldn't take him too long to train as left midfielder as well, where I think he would be actually pretty good. He just needs a little bit more pace and he would be ideal for that position. One of the other positions I mentioned that you do need to strengthen was striker. And once again, we've got quite a few good options here too. With the amount of Ukrainians that are already in the squad, I found two more that could fit in as striker that I think would be good and suitable for Serie A. The first one of these is Vladislav Supriya, who plays for Dinamo Kiev. Now this guy's six foot tall, he has 85 pace, he can finish at 73, he's got good reactions, good ball controls, he does have really poor stamina though at 52, but as a 20 year old, he has got room to develop. So I would make sure you have him on stamina training for as long as possible just to try and get it into maybe the low 70s where it's actually a usable level. The other option would be Roman Yeremchuk who has 82 sprint speed but only 70 acceleration. He is 6 foot 3 so he is a really good target man. He's got better finishing than Supriya and he's got a lot more strength and 77 stamina so a more usable player although 4 years older and with less potential. He'll set you back around 10 million pounds or 12 million euros depending on what currency you play on. So have a look at your Remchuk for your starting striker position. The only other area that I mentioned might need help with rebuilding is centre back. But you do have some good options already in the club. You have the options to either retrain Marla to be a centre back which he could definitely do. As 6 foot 1 with 93 sprint speed he would be an amazing centre back on FIFA. Although you would miss out on his 76 crossing. You've also got Bosco Sutalo, who's a young Croatian centre-back, who again has potential to be pretty good. He might not be as fast as Marla, with just 65 pace, but he does have potential to be around an 80 rated player. Both of these would be good options, but you've also got older player Mattia Caldara, 6 foot 2, not got much more potential, but he could definitely fit in at centre-back. Other than this, you could possibly retrain Darun or Hataboa to be centre-backs, because they're both fast and they're both fairly tall. These are only in a pinch of course, it would be better to go out and sign a centre back, but I'll leave who you can sign up to you, because there isn't too much choice out there that I can suggest. Anyway, that's all we have for today's video, hopefully you've enjoyed it, and hopefully you'll give it a like and subscribe to see more guides like this, not only for FIFA 21, but for FIFA 22 coming out very soon. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Cheers, goodbye.